So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we will cover the main highlight features and do an overview of Sony's A6500. The A6500 came as a surprise to current Sony users who weren't expecting another successor only one year later. Technically, it replaces the previously released A6300, and at first glance, the cameras are virtually identical as it keeps many of the tried and true features of the predecessor. However, Sony has improved its specific weaknesses and added several incremental updates to deliver a stronger camera. They aim this as a competitor to Canon's 80D, Fujifilm's X-T2, and Panasonic's G85. It features the same 24.2 megapixel sensor as the predecessor, which still provides excellent image quality and dynamic range. However, it obtains the same processor from the flagship A99, allowing the camera to supply continuous shooting speeds of up to 11 frames per second and an enormous 100 shot buffer, representing nearly a five times improvement over the predecessor. On the video front, it now records 4K Ultra HD video up to 30 frames per second and 1080p video up to 120 frames per second. It also supplies Sony's S-Log profiles for cinematic footage that lends itself to better post-production adjustments along with a clean HDMI output for use with external recorders and a built-in gamma curve. For displays, it features a 3-inch LCD, which is now also a touchscreen. The screen supports touch focus, drag focus, AF touchpad, and pinch to zoom in the playback mode. And it also features a high resolution electronic viewfinder. For focus, it provides a 425 point phase detect autofocusing system with IAF and continuous IAF as well. The system delivers excellent subject tracking performance and extensive customization for added versatility. Battery performance is a weak point of this particular camera, however, it uses the same W series battery as the predecessor, and Sony rates the camera at 300 shots per charge, which is below industry standard for a mirrorless camera. Extra batteries will be needed with this specific camera. However, physically, the camera maintains the same high quality construction and build as the predecessor. However, it features a redesigned grip, which is deeper and provides a more comfortable hold. Outside of that, it also offers a built-in pop-up flash, 5-axis image stabilization, Sony's clear image zoom, the slow and quick recording mode, wireless connectivity, USB charging, and a microphone input. In the end, Sony's A6500 has a few shortcomings but remains an excellent camera overall, especially at this price point. It has a robust feature set and extensive customization. While it lacks any crazy groundbreaking features and wasn't a trendsetter during its release, it's still a welcome evolution amongst the A6000 lineup of APS-C cameras. The features implemented eliminated much of the weaknesses of the predecessor to deliver a camera that is far more refined and far more capable. And as it stands, the Sony A6500 makes for a strong all-rounder that's perfect for multimedia shooters. So there you have it, my friends. There are the highlights in the overview of Sony's A6500. For more information on the A6500 and other Sony cameras, check out our website, photographypx.com. Go to our camera reviews page, then to the Sony section, and there you will see a full detailed written review as well as other reviews of cameras that may be of interest to you. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography. <laughs>